All right, hey everybody. My name is Malisha McGregor, and I'm a senior UI engineer right now, but in a past life, I used to be a mechanical and aerospace engineer, which is how we get to using machine learning to improve UI UX, roundabout ways. So, the goal of this is to make our Skynet future more user-friendly. <laughs> so, I like to give a quick overview of what I'm going to talk about before we get into it. So first, how many of y'all know about neural networks, like how they work? Oh, yes. Okay, how many people have heard of BrainJS? That's more than I've seen ever. So, <laughs> great. Is Charlie here? Oh, yes, maybe, no. Anyways, you'll get to see why I asked later. So then we'll get into more of like how you actually do machine learning. So we'll talk about choosing features to use, how you actually train a model to understand our wonky user behavior, and how you actually use a machine learning model to make updates to your DOM. And at the end, of course, there's some little takeaways. So just to get you kind of warmed up and started with neural networks, a neural network is basically a math equation that makes predictions. You put in stuff, you get out stuff. So one thing that I think personally, machine learning has a really bad, um, I guess, thing with is jargon. So I'm hoping to break some of that for you guys. So a neural network is basically just a brain made of layers of nodes. And this is what a node looks like. So you have as many inputs as you want. You assign those inputs a certain weight to give them like, uh, let's say, so you give them a weight so that they know which input has more value to the prediction you're trying to make. And then you run it through some crazy math equation that a lot of people don't really want to know about, and then you get a predictive value or values. So another thing that comes up a lot in machine learning is deep learning. Ooh, it's so scary and fancy. But the only thing that deep learning means is that there are more than one node in your neural network. So you can have two nodes, and you have a deep learning model. Oh, you can have three nodes and it's super deep. <laughs> so some of the places that you might see neural networks in the wild would be with like predicting user intent. So your user clicks on a button or a certain part of the screen and you have certain content over there. That means that that user is probably interested in whatever you're showing them that they keep hovering over or clicking on. And based on that fact, you can make adjustments to what that content is. You can change the jargon or the language around it. You can even throw in memes if you want to, just based on the inputs that you get from your user. And something else you can do to help our Skynet future is to make personalized interfaces. So let's say that you have this large data, data set of user behaviors and it shows you that on Tuesdays at 3.05 p.m., all of your users are drinking mimosas. So you might want to throw in something that's maybe orange or something that might not have slipped through their more sober minds. And then, of course, you can always use machine learning to find areas of improvement. So when you get all of your user data, you can take that and look at some of the problem areas they have. So maybe you're trying to increase conversion rates or you're trying to get more people to come to your website or you just want more people to like, spend money on your website. Whatever it is, you can take your user behavior data and skim it for any type of um, behavior that you're trying to make them do. So basically, neural networks in the wild are a way to kind of implant little ticks into our users so that they don't have to worry about as much. It just does stuff for them. 
And that's what all users want. And that's what we want so that they don't break our stuff. So, going to talk about Brain.js for a little bit. It is another JavaScript machine learning library. And I deliberately chose this over TensorFlow a while back. Um, when I tried to learn TensorFlow.js, it confused the absolute crap out of me. So I found Brain.js, and it's so much easier to use. How many people know how to work with objects, arrays, objects with arrays, and arrays of objects? Mm. Then you can do machine learning. <laughs> So one of the best things about Brain.js, if you aren't as interested in getting into like the mathematical stuff or you don't really want to dig too deep into machine learning, you just want to say, hey, I have this data and I need a prediction. This is a really good library to do that with just because objects and arrays are really easy to work with. And again, the tutorials are really straightforward. They get you up and running pretty much from square one. So you can start using sequential models. You can use some RNNs. It's just all built in for you. And I don't have anything to do with Brain.js. I'm just a little bit of a fangirl for it. So just throw that out there. Um, so we'll get into the best part, choosing your features. So features are basically the data points that you're trying to collect from users or from whatever other hardware systems you have. But for this talk in particular, we're focused on our UI UX. So one of the biggest questions you have to ask is what is going to add the most value for a user? I know a lot of us find these new tech tools and we're like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. And then we start throwing stuff into the application that really doesn't do anything for the user. So make sure that when you're looking for those data points you're trying to get from your user, that the prediction you get from that data will add value to the user. And then you have to figure out how are you going to get that information? Are you going to hook them up to some kind of EEG sensor and monitor brain waves? Are you going to hack into their webcam and watch them do whatever people do? Or are you just going to get like some mouse inputs or some information from input boxes? Probably the second one, hopefully. And then another thing that a lot of machine learning projects lose sight of at some point is what exactly are you trying to predict? So you have all of this data, you have terabytes of data, and you're like, yes, machine learning, we need to use that. Okay, what are you trying to do with it? So make sure that you actually know what you're trying to predict before you just dive into data analysis. And then this is my favorite. Will anybody care if you make this update? So, yeah, it's cool to use machine learning and stuff. Yeah, it has its applications. But at the end of the day, if your users don't care, was it really a successful project? Just something to hmm, hmm, ponder about. So this is the fun part. We're going to get into actually training a model to understand user behavior. And I have code and a demo that is supposed to be running right now. It worked a few minutes ago, which is why this is commented out instead of deleted. Okay, can you guys see that okay? And we can ignore the comment for now. But anyways, we're going to go into the back end. So this is one of the ways you can create a machine learning model using Node.js with the Brain.js library. And basically what we do, the main things, I mean, how many of you are back-end engineers or full stack? Oh, OK, that's fine. <laughs> Everybody knows about Node and servers then. So pretty much the only thing you really need to do is import this Brain.js library and blah, blah, blah. OK, so now this is the fun part. So this is our training data for the neural network model. And it's very small because I made up all of these values. You know, demo data set. 
But basically what we're doing is we are going to make this UI interface that eh, kind of bothers people who might be trying to hack our website. So based on what they type into our input box, there's certain things that a normal user wouldn't. Like, I don't expect a user to type in something like having or group or select, especially in any type of combination. So based on these values, which you see, it's an array of objects. <laughs> and down here, that is our input data. So this is what we are saying that, hey, if you see any of these inputs, we're going to use them to predict if our user is malicious or not. So basically, if they use any of these words or terms, it assigns a maliciousness rating. And that is our output data. So the way the machine learning model works is that you have to have a training input data set and a training output data set because machines aren't people. They don't really fill in the blanks yet. So what we're doing is called supervised machine learning. And that's just where you tell it, hey, if you see this combination of things, you can expect it to mean this. And that's how we teach our model to make predictions based off of inputs. So basically, we're going to use these two data sets to train our model, which is incredibly easy. So little little jankiness here. Again, I wanted to make sure this actually worked this morning. So what we're doing here is just combining the input and output data into a single, I think this is an object, object or array, whatever. We combine it into a single entity. And we do that because that's how the Brain.js library works. And ta-da, this is how you make a neural network. This one line right here, you have a neural network. And basically, we just kept it really simple and went with the neural network. So there's like recursive neural networks, there's some other crazy things you can use, but this is easy. And we gave it three hidden layers. What that means is that basically we give it the inputs, those inputs have weights, and then the model takes over and it's like, this combination of inputs equals this and it just pushes it through to the prediction. So hidden layers are good when you need more accuracy, but remember that you don't want too many because it'll slow your results down. It'll, it'll just be really, really slow. And you don't want that when you're running a server that people are hitting you know, millions of times a day. But this is the best part. So you see this? This is how you train a neural network. One function call. And we have our model made. That is it. Isn't Brain.js easy? So we have our model made. And now all we have to do is make predictions. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to use our model to make updates to the DOM based on some of the inputs that our users put in. Again, deep breath. It's demo time. So hopefully this will work. First, though, how many of y'all have heard of Slipsum? <gasps> yes, there's a couple people. But OK, it's Lorem Ipsum. Did my Wi-Fi disconnected. But you should definitely Google Slipsum. I don't know why my Wi-Fi disconnected, but such is life when AV stuff happens. But just to show you kind of what it would look like, if you start typing in words, you kind of notice the colors change. And you see my maliciousness rating is definitely pretty up there. You really don't want people to be able to type this in. So you'll probably have some kind of security blocks on the back end. And that's cool. But why not start messing up the user interface for somebody trying to type it in? <laughs> It comes from that principle. Have you guys seen the like bootlegged video games where they start really messing up the deeper you get into? Oh, OK. It's basically the same concept. You just make it difficult for them to keep trying to hack you. 
even though you already have all of your backend secure in your database and nobody's using admin, admin, so you're good to go. <laughs> but the way that we do this is on the front end, we have a very small piece of code somewhere in here. Somewhere, yes, here we go. So basically what we're doing here is we get the input from the user, we send it to our back end. It goes through our machine learning model right here. And what it's looking for is it's going to split up all of the words that the users typed into the box, and it's going to make a new training input data set. So instead of our original, which was just some made up stuff to set the base for our model, we actually have real data now. It's wonderful. But all that's happening here is we are assigning some kind of value to it, and we rerun the model. So this line right here is it. This is how you get a predicted value from a machine learning algorithm. You do another function call. That's it. It's pretty great. But back on the front end, we get that function, well, we call that function, it passes the data back, and then we start to mess with our user. So this is where I like to ask you guys, what do you want to change on the screen when somebody tries to hack you? Do you want it to like add a style where they can't type in anymore? Do you want it to move everything around? I'm doing live coding here, so what do you guys want to see today? Comic Sans. <laughs> um, I couldn't hear a lot of them, but I think Comic Sans might be it. <laughs> so we'll just do something simple. I think I have that installed. Is it Font Family? Let's see if that's actually going to work. And um, is it still running? <laughs> okay, everything's still running. Just reload. So let's see if it's gonna do Comic Sans, hopefully. I can't tell if that changed. Can you guys? I don't think so. I don't think it changed it to Comic Sans, but. Basically, I think you kind of get the idea here that you can pretty much wreck someone's day just with machine learning and UI UX. But on the flip side of that, let's see if the other demo is running. Oh, I think it might actually work. It's always nerve wracking when you get up here and it's like, I think my demo works. I don't click on stupid stuff. Okay, so this time, instead of us, you know, making life hard for the user, one of the things we're gonna try to do is make it easier. But I will throw in a caveat. This is just a fun thing. You should probably never make live updates to your UI UX when a user is actively using it. <laughs> you don't really want buttons and things to move around. Just throwing that out there. But basically, when a user types in something, so tell me something good. I'm in Hawaii. Uh, no, of course one of them wouldn't work, but that's, that's fine. We roll with it. But anyways, I'm not going to stand up here and try to debug that all morning for you guys. But basically what that one was supposed to do is as a user types, it starts to pick up kind of their sentiment on how they feel today. And based on that, it'll either brighten color of the screen to like a yellow because they're really sad and they need some sunshine in their lives. 
or it'll darken it a little bit because they're a little bit too happy and need to bring it down. <laughs> but um, that is pretty much it for the code side. I'm really glad at least one out of two worked. So I will go ahead and wrap up. So the key takeaways, try to find uncommon ways to implement machine learning. So one of the other projects that I've worked on with machine learning is like this EEG sensor that picks up brain waves and you can use it to control stuff like real life stuff like drones and freaking robots that climb up the wall just from your brain signals. It's awesome and it uses JavaScript. And then use BrainJS because TensorFlow.js is really difficult for no reason. And of course, one of our goals is to always improve our UI and UX, but try to think about how you could use your data to improve the UI and UX on an individual level. So one of the things you can do is get just this large data storage factory of user data and say, hey, I think I wanna see if my users will actually buy stuff on this day in this country at this time when the weather is like this. Machine learning is that powerful and you can get those predictions. Just don't jump into buying a lot of data before you actually know what you wanna use it for because a lot of companies have done that and then their machine learning stuff didn't give them any results. So just some takeaways. Um, yeah, that's it for me.